Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryan of Magnetic Service. There are so many questions about living. There are so many questions about how things work. This particular time, we're talking about the future. This is indeed the fourth installment about the future. And the question is, does God control your future? Now, most of you would say, I don't think so. But there's an entire other group who will say, yes, we believe it. There is another group who has weighed in, is very, very, I would say, intellectual, who said that life has to be a simulation and that we are all in a simulation and therefore there has to be some kind of control over it. So there are many answers that are given to you about the future. Does God control the future? How do you find God? How do you define God? This is another question. And we have told you any way you want to. It is the creative source, that which created you, that which created the love, the joy that is on this planet, the duality that is on this planet. All of these things were given for you to have, and here it comes, free choice. So the creator gives you free choice. And then for you to say, well, then the creator controls the future, that would not work. It's an oxymoron. It's a, it, it's, it's a conflicting idea within itself. And yet, there are reasons why it is asked. Let me give you one of them. Kryon has said there is no tampering with the future. That God lets humanity alone to find their own center to find their own enlightenment, evolvement or devolvement, and that it's hands off. And yet, there have been channels that say that inventions all over the planet are given to humanity when they are needed and not before. Is that controlling the future? Or is that giving you the tools when you're ready and you create the future? Well, that perhaps is an esoteric question. How real is this, this idea? For those who love to study the history of technology, you find something exceptional. You find aberrations in the evolvement of technology. Things perhaps that should have been exceptionally obvious are never developed. Like, for instance, the Chinese having kites 4,000 years before the Wright brothers flew and said, wow, I bet we can apply that to a machine. Here's something you should know about the Wright brothers, and I have said this before. The first ones to have powered flight over a certain distance made world history. And they are the ones seen to have invented powered flight. However, they only beat the French by two weeks. It was happening all over the world. At the same time, seemingly, and not a necessarily step-by-step -step driven evolvement that you would expect. It burst on the scene all at once, as though some angelic form had come down and said, well, here's your ideas now, you're ready for it, and gave it to humanity, and they all started developing it. That has happened over and over. You know, electricity, that's not hard. That's not hard to have figured out. It took a very long time to find it, and even today, there are those who are controversial, actually, who gave it to you? Because it happened all over the world. You have your favorite inventor, and whether it was uh, Thomas Edison or, or somebody else, magnetics, all, all of these things. How about radio? That's really controversial. 
that burst on the scene at the same time. It's so close to who invented it and who was there to make it work and show it that even today there's arguments between two men and specifically who brought it to you. So what I am doing now is simply giving you some information. What if it were true? That invention is given to you when you need it. It goes further than that, and I have given you this information before. There is coming to you the next great invention. Now, there are many on the way of this, and what I mean by that, precursors of this, but the big one is coming. And it will then be the father, you might say, of many more. The revelation of being able to sense, see, work with, and invent with multidimensionality. You are a multidimensional creature. You sit where you are listening to this in four dimensions. Height, width, breadth, and time. What do all of those have in common? They're all variables. And the scientist Einstein showed you finally that time is not what you thought. It's variable. It then becomes a dimension. So here you sit in these four. And yet physicists are telling you, well, there's a lot more of them. There may be 20, 30, maybe more. As defined by what dimensions are, physicists say there are a lot of them. Physicists study quantum things, multidimensional things outside of four dimensions. There are even quantum biologists. What does that tell you? What if your cellular structure is starting to be seen as multidimensional? These are the studies of the day. What if you could see other dimensions? Well, dear ones, that is not as strange as it sounds. But I'll tell you, what's coming with that is such an important revelation that it's not been given to you yet because you would weaponize it. I have given you this over and over to think about. What if there are things on the horizon waiting to be given to you that would create electricity and that would create power without pollution, would create the lack of hunger anywhere, would grow crops, would give you clean water? What if that was coming? What is stopping it? Why isn't it here yet? Because every single one of those has something to do with either magnetics or another kind of multidimensional force, if you want to call it, attribute, if you want to call it, that, ready, has always been there. Has always been there. I want you to watch for things when new technologies start to be worked with and discovered that are truly new, not an evolution of what you have, not a new system on a computer or a faster memory, I'm talking about something absolutely new. When you start to see that, there'll be an attribute in there to look for. And here's the attribute. It was always there. That whoever discovered it is now working on it found that in the ancients or found that in some inventor's workbook who you know. This is what I'm telling you. This planet of yours sits in front of you with everything you ever need without polluting it. Everything you ever need to feed the masses, those who are still coming on, the, on this earth, the, the billions to arrive won't be hungry. There are things here they haven't yet been given because in order for you to see multidimensional things, there will be giant revelations of who you are. Imagine for just a moment that there's something coming 
to allow you to see multidimensionality and you say, that is so cool, that is so good. What would happen if you turned that instrument and looked at a human? <laughs> You'd start to see things that would go against everything you were taught about who you are and why you're here. Pieces and parts of your very soul would start to show. Do you see how that might be an issue without an evolved consciousness on this planet that was ready for that kind of an allowance? Dear ones, I am in love with all of you and I am telling you a truth. Does God create the future? No, you do. But there are enhancements, nudges along the way for you to use. That's because spirit is in love with humanity. I am as well. Bless you all for listening. And so it is. Hi, everybody. The short cry and channeling you just watched is part of a much larger popular weekly program called Healing Wednesdays. Interested? I invite you to find out more at cryingmasters.com slash hw.